I was stood in the fairground watching one of those huge rides that spin around and I love that sense, that, that's, that excitement that you get when you see something coming whistling past you. And I thought would, would it be amazing to make a piece where you had these huge speakers and they were um, again spinning around whistling over your head. Almost like a Big Dipper. Almost like a Big Dipper. Well I'm, I'm really into the spectacle. I'm attempting to create a large-scale spectacle for people which which excites people through that spectacle as much as, as the sounds it's making. Right in front of me was a family with a group of children and they became very excited when the cone had reached the highest point and was just about to tip over and go through 360 yes. degrees. I thought that moment of um, the tension, if you like, of the bell getting higher and higher and, and when of... they get right up to the top you're just wanting them to go over the top. So I wanted to, to hold that as long as possible. Mm -hmm. And then all of the ringers have a, a cue, and at a certain time, they're all instructed to attempt to keep their bell pointing upright. Of course, if you're a proper, you know, English church bell ringer, you start with the bells up and then you ring down. So it has some similarity to that. But also, I really liked this sense of tension. Oh, they're all stood still, and then they all start coming down. Talking about the bell ringers, they all had cue sheets yes. with timings because the piece lasts 23 minutes and at various times they had to do certain things, particular actions. I think yes. one of the instructions is nearly. <laughs> nearly, <laughs> yes. Which is quite yes. funny as well. Tell me how you worked out how to have the bell ringers performing their different actions at these very specific different times. Well, my sense of the piece as a composition is that it goes through a series of, of musical changes, mm -hmm. compositional changes, but also there are two things going on. One, that you have the bell swinging, and then it swings slightly higher, and then higher, and then gets very near to the top. So the composition is timed to work with the action of the bell. I'm reliant on, on volunteers to ring the bells, and so I needed a series of simple instructions in order to attempt some kind of choreography. I asked them to hold the cone out in front of them at the beginning. The audience doesn't quite know what's going to happen. They're holding the bell out, there's noise coming out. It, it changes the expectation, that's the idea. Um, gradually those sounds start to change and they begin to swing. And then those sounds, uh, the, the, more, the electronic noise sounds, turn into what are in effect reversed synthesized bell sounds. And their timings are asking them to reach a certain level of swinging by certain times. When it says nearly, that means by 11 minutes, I want them to get it near the top, but not quite. And then I think in this particular version, 13 minutes, I want them to get it to the top and hold it there for one minute. And then you have this visual image of all the cones pointing upwards, which is quite striking. Then there is a quite a dramatic change in the composition. Um, I call it the manic bells section. It's, it's a little bit crazy, but then they're sort of going round and they're all going round at different speeds. And then gradually it starts to, to die down and decay and ends very, very quietly. I know that the sound is changing quite dramatically for each tower within each enclosure. It goes through a, a yes. lot of different resonances. But at one point I felt that there was a specific like, distribution of registers, that maybe there was, there was high in one area while there was low in another area, that there was a kind of a bass drone yes. at one point and then some very very lovely high pitch, almost like steel drum sounds, mm. which were working against the bass. Yes. There are, for example, after the point where they go round, it goes through this manic bell section, and then they go into a section of high bells, mm -hmm. but they're all time to overlap. So one may have changed from high bells to a lower bells, but the other ones are still going. Mm -hmm. So you get this got the overlap. Yeah. So you will hear low bells and high bells. Yeah at certain points, but then that gradually shifts until they're all low. Does vibrato play a, a big part in this piece? I mean, again, according to where you were, whether you turned at a particular time, it, it felt as if something was really wobbling in terms of the sound. Well, of course, the, the movement of the bell yeah. is going to create a kind of uh, a something of a vibrato. I can't entirely control that mm. because it's very hard to predict exactly how that's going to work. But um, the sounds don't have vibrato on them, so the vibrato is coming from the movement of the bells. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about the, um, the boxes. 
I don't know if I should say really. It's it's kind of a mystery. <laughs> it's a the magic box. The you magic don't want to give it away. It's uh, it's very prosaic. It's a it's a it's a car battery providing power right. to uh, a bespoke uh, sound generating device which has amplifiers in and a sound generator which is replaying uh, WAV files. So I've distributed uh, the composition amongst the eight separate towers and each of those OAV players has a stereo channel so there are actually two channels coming through each so it's a 16 channel composition. So it's almost like a, a kind of virtual DJ as well yeah. sort of floating <laughs> around between these towers. So here we are in Newbury. The piece is going to be performed at Zebedee's Yard in Hull yes. and also at the South Bank Centre. Tell me about how it will change as you see it in those locations. Well here we're in a kind of quintessential English market mm -hmm. town and it looks um, I'm very excited about the way it looks here. It's the first time we've tried it. In Hull, we're in Zebedee's Yard, which is an enclosed large courtyard, and I think that's an amazing space for it. I think the sound will be much more contained, mm -hmm. um, less visual distraction in a way, and there'll be much more focus on the eight uh, towers. Then in the South Bank, we're taking five of the towers there, and we're located on a slip road between two of the buildings. So we, but the, one of the nice things about that is that, of course, it being the South Bank, there are lots of elevated walkways. So the audience will be able to take, they'll be able to go up and look at these things from above as well as standing below. One last question, which may seem a little bit odd. When I first um, saw the towers and the cones, it made me think of ships' funnels. There's something about this setup which, which makes me see a ship, and I think about bells on ships as well and I wonder if that either consciously or subconsciously entered into your thinking at it, all. It was clearly subconscious because I didn't get that uh, nautical reference until almost today. This is the first time we've had it up and running. They have taken on uh, a ship-like quality. The swinging of the, of the bells suggests the, 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 the rising and falling of a boat in, on water. Mm -hmm. And the, the shape of the barrier around them almost suggests a boat. And yeah. I quite like that. It certainly wasn't intended, but I'm quite happy to have that association and work with that association more. Captain Lee, happy sailing. <laughs> Thanks very much, Kevin.